What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench and today we're going to be working on probably what is going to be the most challenging part of this build but ultimately the most rewarding and usually the harder you work the better results you get. So my idea for this is we wanted to do wood accents onto this nine millimeter build. Now I showed you earlier how we were going to do our side rails out of this Coco Bolo. Now I also have um, Coco Bolo slats here. I also have a zebra wood as well. And what my vision is for this, and the reason we picked this Timber Creek grip and hand stop is because on here there is a ridge. or my thoughts are we can somehow inlay the wood into there and kind of still have the structure of steel but the accent of wood. Now both the grip and the hand stop have this recess. So the challenge here is how do we mimic this shape that we can stencil onto our blanks and then we'll just, you know, cut out the blanks and slowly fit it into here. So I think I've got the solution. And it require and it entails the plastic cap of our parts kit. And my idea is if we get this, we're gonna cut it out, cut the pieces off around here. So we have one flat piece of transparent plastic. We're gonna lay it on top of here and we're going to trace it with a sharpie. Okay? And once we have that, we'll essentially have our clear template which we can use for the right and if we put it down the other way, it'll still be there for the left. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to trace these out real quick and see what we end up with. Alright, so after a couple minutes, this is what we've got. So we've got our one template for a grip, we have our other template for our hand stop. And you can see that when we put this on here, if you can see, this line I made just to the outside of the ridge. So I know that our inside of the line is basically our zero point. Outside will give us, you know, a little bit of room to sand down and, and kind of get it nice and form fitting to this and we did the same here. What I will do with this is just get a scissor and cut right to the inside of the line so that when I trace this onto our blanks we'll essentially be putting that one eighth or that little piece back and you'll see these fit on our blanks just perfectly and we'll have our right side and then we'll flip this over and then we'll have our left side. The good thing about using the transparent, uh, using the transparent template is you can see the grain. You can essentially see what you're going to end up with. So if you wanted to pick out the best parts of the grain, the most matching parts, you can do that fairly easily because you know exactly what you're going to have on each side. So let me cut these out off screen and then we'll trace them on to our wood. So we had our templates like so. Now what I did was I cut them out. You can see right here. All right, so we cut around the black line. So now we have our two templates, the one for our grip and the one for our forward grip or hand stop. And I transcribe them onto our wood. So as you can see, we've got our right, our left side grip there, and then our right side grip on this side. And I did the same for our hand stops. Now I'm not sure which wood I want to use, whether I'm going to use the zebra wood or the coco bolo, but I did it on both. So I've got the templates on here and the templates on here, and we're just going to do both and end up with two sets of furniture and I guess we'll see which one we like. This one is going to be the one for the handrails. 
on the sides and then this what I'll have to do is I'll have to split this and this will be the handrails for the zebra wood, wood set. So the next step from here is to using a coping saw we're gonna cut around here get it as close to the line as possible but I still want to be able to see the line and then I'll use the sander to get it a little bit more detailed and remember as we're going we're gonna get it to where we like it fit and see how we are and then adjust as needed this is going to be the most detail the most time consuming the most meticulous part of this entire build because you really only got one chance to get it right and you have about a hundred chances to mess it up so take your time go through continuously fit and see how it goes and once you get one fit right, the good thing about these is I measured and they're identical on both sides. So once you get one to fit, you know you've got your exact uh, specs and you can use that kind of as a template for all of the other ones. So I'm going to go over the coping saw, cut this out, and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so just using a standard... 8 inch coping saw. Obviously if you have a scroll saw this would be much much easier needless to say but I don't have a scroll saw so um, hint hint Santa Claus been good this year. Okay but this is what we did we just basically took it just to the edges and the rest of this we can do with the belt sander and it will still allow us to keep our 90s going around. So we're gonna head over to the belt sander and just follow these lines all the way around until we get our shape. Well, after, I don't know, I'll call it five minutes on the uh, belt sander, we've got this pretty much formed out and you can see that it fits perfect inside of our grip there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the other side. And once we get these in there, all we're gonna do really is obviously contour these down and how we're going to affix these to the grips, we're going to use an epoxy. And we're also going to use two Chicago screws that will go through. Now for those of you who aren't familiar what a Chicago screw is or a binding post, it's basically one of these. So it has one sleeve and then the screw goes into the other sleeve. And we're essentially going to do that to bind these two together and hopefully that and the epoxy and the fact that it's recessed will not make this move again we're experimenting here but all in all I think that turned out pretty good I'm just gonna do the other side all right so that didn't really take any time at all I used the one we had done as a template and just you know followed the contours until I hit my template and worked out fine so we've got I marked our insides here so we know this one will fit here this one will fit here they both fit perfect you can see there when we have them up they're gonna have like this nice little inlay look to them and at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these down to comfortable grip and that's just gonna be done on the belt sander as well when we're focusing on contouring you want to make sure we're not taking any away from the edges because we know I've, we've got our fit perfect. So what we want to focus on is really the sides. And a good way to do that is to put a mark as to, not on your finger, but to put a mark as to kind of where you want your, I guess your bevel or so to start and where you want it to finish. So here we're looking if we were to look at it this way, I suppose, we would want probably to take about half of that away. It's gonna be a lot of material. And then we'll just bevel. Down. So if we're looking at this, all this material up top is what's gonna to have to go away. And that's just sanding. Now, if you do have a scroll saw, you probably could split this in half and eliminate a lot of that sanding, maybe even get two scales out of one piece. Again, I don't have that luxury, so we're just gonna have to do this uh, with good old fashioned elbow grease. So after a good 
five minutes again on the belt sander it made pretty quick work so we went from here our nice blocky scale to this you can see our pattern that we followed and this fits in here I mean perfect we'll just clean this bottom up a little round that edge off and I'll call this one done we'll just finish the other one so after a little bit of contouring here is our I'm ready to call this the final product before it is assembled uh, we've got our one and our two here then you can see our contour even on both sides I suppose you could take this down a little bit more but uh, I can do that by hand and also on the top there I can do that by hand but right now you see those tops could use a little bit of work there file work uh, but this feels nice it's a nice thick grip feels great in my hands it's not small um, so I'm happy with the way this turned out just a little bit of detail work around the sides here and we'll call these done so next up what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill some holes and then we're gonna insert our screws there and see what the final piece looks like assembled alrighty so a little bit of fitting uh, we countersunk our screws and here's our final result here now I think this turned out great for a first time um, I put a little bit of tongue oil on that zebra wood and it really like makes it pop the only thing I'm not fond of is this Chicago screw I feel like this silver really detracts from the wood so I'm gonna try to see if I can find it in maybe a black <clears throat> or maybe something a little smaller because it does take away from I think all that work we just put in but oh you know what maybe it doesn't maybe it plays off great with that trigger I don't know you be the judge what do you think should we get change this out or keep it the same it's kind of I, I kind of like it now that I'm thinking about it let me know in comments below what do you think change it out keep it the same it's going to be up to you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on this and working on our hand guard or hand stop. The process is going to be essentially the same. Just take your time, measure, cut, measure, cut, measure, cut. Keep going back and forth. Don't take too much off all at once. And I know you'll be fine because y'all are more detailed oriented than I am. So I've got my work cut out for me for the weekend getting this stuff together now in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make the hands uh, the uh, hand guard rails using key mod that's going to be a quick video coming up soon after this one so thanks all for stopping by hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on something new until next time make sure that you treat every weapon as if it was loaded and practice safe firearms handling at all times god bless america G2 out.